As the early morning mist clung to the rugged coastline of Cornwall, England, marine biologist Dr. Alex Bennett stood at the edge of the bustling harbour, his gaze fixed on the horizon where the azure waters of the Atlantic Ocean met the sky. Seagulls swooped and cried overhead, their calls blending with the distant hum of fishing boats and the rhythmic clang of buoys swaying with the gentle waves. Besides him, Captain Jack O'Connor, weathered and seasoned by years spent navigating these treacherous waters, surveyed the scene with a keen eye. His vessel, the Misty Horizon, bobbed gently in the harbour, ready to embark on their mission to uncover the mystery behind the vanishing seals. The air was tinged with salt and anticipation as Dr. Bennett adjusted the straps of his backpack, ensuring his research equipment was secure. Behind him, the quaint harbour town of Penzance stirred to life, with fishermen hauling their morning catch and tourists meandering through narrow cobbled streets lined with colourful cottages. Jagged rocks jutted out of the water like ancient sentinels, guarding secrets hidden underneath the surface. As the misty horizon cut through the gentle swells, Alex Bennett found himself lost in thought, his mind swirling with theories and possibilities. Grey seals, with their sleek bodies and soulful eyes, were more than just subjects of his research. They were an integral part of the delicate ecosystem that thrived along the Cornish coast. Halicherus gripus. They exhibited fascinating feeding behaviour, predominantly piscivorous, feeding on fish, eating cod, herring, sand eels, and flatfish. They were remarkable animals. One incredible aspect of grey seal feeding behaviour is their ability to adapt to different foraging strategies. They may employ a sit-and-wait approach, where they patiently wait near underwater obstacles or in areas of high fish concentration before ambushing their prey like a chubby marine cat. Alternatively, they may actively pursue prey, using their streamlined bodies and powerful swimming abilities to chase and capture their food. They're also super adaptable, being found throughout the Northern Hemisphere, well, except for the south coast of Cornwall, it seems, as of late. He pondered all the factors that could be influencing their sudden disappearance. Was it a shift in ocean currents? Distribution of their food sources? Perhaps human activity, such as pollution or overfishing? There was the issue with increasing river pollution runoff. So, who's paying you to look into this? Alex was brought out of his pondering by the captain, who had apparently sidled up beside him to peer off into the same murky waters as he. They must have already reached their recommended distance. He must have been lost in thought for quite some time. Well, I'm working for the University of Plymouth, but I'm doing this as a favour to a friend. They work for the British Divers Marine Life Rescue. Bloody hell, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Aye, it is. But, to tell you the truth, I also take the chance to get out on the ocean whenever I can. So, this is just as much for me as it is for the seals. Good man. Sure, what are you thinking? Climate change? Hard to say, but it's best not to jump to conclusions, though. It could very well be related, but it could be anything from pollution, prey migration, a novel predator in the area, disease... Novel predator? Oh, I... Something that doesn't usually hunt here, but can every so often. Like great whites. I think you're right. You think it's a great white? Nah. If the transient killer whales don't scare them off, a wee shark ain't gonna do that. It means something else. Jack seemed to linger on a thought for a moment, his eyes moving around slightly, not looking at anything in particular, as if he were caught in a dream while still awake. Mr. O'Neill, you're not going to go diving in past dark, are you? Jack suddenly turned to face him, a bead of sweat visibly dripping off the end of his nose as he looked Alex dead in the eyes. I hadn't planned on it. 
It's not recommended alone either. But I'll be sitting on my telemetry to pick up signals from a few of the tagged animals. I don't even have my diving suit with me. Jack released a breath he had apparently been holding in, sighing deeply and closing his eyes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's best you be careful. Sorry, think I need to sit down. If you have any issues, let me know, okay? Then Jack slipped below deck without confirmation, leaving Alex with his brows furrowed in confusion. That doesn't bode well. You better not bloody chop me up in my sleep. Alex began to prepare his equipment for the day, taking out the metal aerial and plugging its cord into the handheld receiver. Not a single cloud marred the expanse whilst he did this, and the sun hung like a golden orb on the horizon, casting a soft, diffused light across the tranquil scene. Despite the seemingly idyllic conditions, there was an unmistakable tension in the air, a silent warning whispered by the gentle sway of the boat and the distant cry of seagulls wheeling overhead. Occasional ripples broke the smoothness of the water, hinting at unseen currents and hidden depths lurking below. The horizon, usually a sharp demarcation between sky and sea, blurred and shifted, playing tricks on the eyes and feeding the sense of unease that hung heavy in the air. Suddenly, a lone dolphin breached the surface in the distance, its sleek form gliding effortlessly through the water before disappearing once more into the depths. It seemed to move with purpose, its presence a reminder that there was still life in this area, despite man's best efforts over the last few hundred years. After an hour of periodically switching arms with which to hold the devices, scanning the horizon slowly in a practiced, almost robotic motion, Alex decided to take a break. There were no readings from any of the six tagged animals in the colony, which was very concerning to him. Should have been at least one pinging by now. Alex huffed as he leaned overboard, watching the waves bounce off the hull of the vessel. Suddenly, his eyes caught a shape six meters out. There, illuminated by the dappled sunlight filtering through the clear water, was a magnificent leatherback sea turtle, its huge form gracefully navigating the depths. The turtle's dark carapace contrasted starkly against the ethereal glow of the water, its sleek body propelled by powerful strokes of its flippers. With slow, deliberate movements, it approached a previously unseen cluster of lion's mane jellyfish their long, flowing tentacles undulating in the gentle current. As Alex watched in fascination, the turtle extended its neck and opened its mouth wide, revealing rows of sharp, pointed papillae perfectly adapted for gripping its gelatinous prey. With remarkable precision, it began to feed, delicately plucking chunks from the jellyfish and swallowing them whole showing no reaction to the stinging tentacles that would have caused him to roll around in agony. Despite its size, the leatherback moved with a grace and fluidity that belied its bulk, each movement purposeful and efficient as it foraged for sustenance amidst the drifting tendrils of the jellyfish. For Alex, witnessing such a spectacle was a reminder of the interconnectedness of life in the ocean, the delicate balance that existed between its inhabitants. This reptile, with its ancient lineage and majestic presence, epitomized the resilience and adaptability of marine life. So surely, the seals shouldn't be too far away. And if they were, they would return. Huh. <laughs> well, this ain't a half bad trip after all. He said, smiling down at the creature, as he snapped a picture of it on his phone. You know where the seals are, mate? The turtle ignored his question and continued to feed. How rude. The 
The turtle shot under the water with a surprising speed as a deep booming sound rumbled from all around. The waves rippled slightly with the force of it. What the fuck? Alex said, steadying himself on the side of the boat. On deck in an instant, Captain Jack O'Neill reacted swiftly to the unexpected cacophony. His weathered face etched with concern as he raced up onto the deck towards Dr. Alex Barnett, who stood at the prow of the boat, his eyes wide with astonishment. Alex! O'Neill called out, his voice tinged with urgency as he reached the marine biologist's side. Did you see it? Alex's heart pounded in his chest as he struggled to make sense of the sudden upheaval. His mind raced with possibilities, each more ominous than the last. Could it be a seismic event? A collision with an underwater obstacle of some sort? Or a whale call from point blank? Before he could respond, another rumble echoed through the water, more powerful than the first. This time, it seemed to emanate from directly beneath the boat, sending shockwaves rippling through the hull and setting the two men on edge. As the tension mounted, Alex exchanged a grave glance with Captain O'Neill, their shared apprehension palpable in the air. Did you see it? The captain asked in a delirious rage. No! No, I didn't! What should I have- The surface of the ocean erupted in a spectacle that defied belief. With a thunderous roar, a massive shape breached the water's surface in the distance, dwarfing even the largest creatures of the modern sea. Dr. Alex Bennett and Captain Jack O'Neill stood frozen in awe as they beheld the sight before them. A colossal marine reptile, resembling an ancient ichthyosaur, surged from the depths with breathtaking power and grace. Its sleek, streamlined body, adorned with iridescent scales, gleamed in the sunlight as it soared into the air, defying gravity for a heart-stopping moment before crashing back into the ocean with an earth-shattering splash. The sheer enormity of the creature was staggering, eclipsing even the size of a grey whale, a behemoth of the ancient seas reborn in the modern era. Its long body undulated with effortless strength, propelled by powerful flippers that churned the water into a frothy frenzy. Alex's mind raced with what he had just seen, Surely it was a trick of the light, he thought. It had to be a whale. Otherwise, it was an animal that should have been extinct for millions of years. But still, there it was. The creature breached again, even closer. Its long, slender snout and giant eyes unmistakably not that of a whale. Alex turned to look at the captain, who was almost as wide-eyed as he had just been. My God, I thought dear light kept it away. He said looking out, past Alex, but decidedly not at the ichthyosaur. Well, now you can stop asking if I've seen it, because they seem hard to miss. Alex said, panting as if he had ran a race. This was truly the discovery of a lifetime. It was no wonder the seals had left. Something this large, even if it wasn't their predator, or even able to hunt them close to shore, would surely scare them off, even if just for a little while. Jack backed up a few paces, a tear running down his cheek, before he fell to his knees. They're not what I was talking about, he said, a look of acceptance washing over his expression. Alex was confused. He began to turn around as he heard the unmistakable sound of breaching and felt water trickle down on top of him. He was met with the split-second image of an impossibly large moor lined with serrated hooked teeth, but before the scientist could register anything else about the Colossus, he, the captain, and the rest of the vessel was gone.
Hello everyone, Nature's Temper here, just reminding you that we have t-shirts. If you want to support and show your love for the channel, look in the description below. There you will also find a t-shirt design called Bring Back the Wolf. All proceeds of this design go directly to the Rewilding Institute, a charity that I fully support.